Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The police commissioner releases the 2017 crime statistics. The tourism minister says Nassau is safer than most major cities. Find out more straight ahead. to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top news tonight, crime in the country decreased by 14% last year over 2016. That's according to the 2017 crime statistics that were released by Commissioner of Police Anthony Ferguson this morning. Ferguson called the decrease notable and insists it is not the result of a mere accident. Jasmine Brown reports. During that hour-long press briefing at police headquarters this morning, the commissioner revealed that there was a nearly double-digit decrease in crime overall. As we all know, crime is very dynamic and complex. And while some incidents can be prevented, others are more challenging to address. Last year, we have seen bolder acts by criminals, many of whom seems hell-bent on disrupting public safety. Here's the breakdown. Overall crime against persons was down by 22 percent, with police reporting a drop in five of the nine categories. Despite an overall downward trend, murders were up. In 2017, there were 122 murders, a 10 percent increase over the 111 murders recorded in 2016. However, when we analyze murder trends on a quarterly basis, we noticed some promising results. During the first quarter of 2017, murders were up by 33%. During the second quarter, murders were up by 10%. And in the third quarter, murders more than doubled. However, in the fourth quarter, murders decreased by some 53%. Aside from murders, nearly every other category of violent crime decreased. There was also a 50 percent decrease in attempted murders, with 13 recorded in 2017 compared to 26 in 2016. There was a 34 percent drop in robbery cases and a 27 percent decrease in armed robbery, attempted rapes and rapes last year. The downward trend continued when it came to crimes against property, which fell by 11 percent. All six of the crimes that fall under this category also saw a decline. The most notable decrease involved stolen vehicles, which saw a 31 percent drop from 669 in 2016 to 462 in 2017. Burglaries and housebreakings also saw double-digit decreases, with 15 and 11 percent drops in reported incidents, respectively. When it comes to individual islands, crime was down overall in New Providence by 14 percent and 26 percent in Grand Bahama. However, reported crimes on family islands increased by 6 percent in 2017. This slight increase in the family islands was mostly attributed to a rise in burglaries. Ferguson did not release his policing plan, which has become customary over the years during the annual police press conference. Instead, he said Minister of National Security Marvin Dames will table the document in Parliament. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, there were 52 rapes and 11 attempted rapes reported to police in 2017. That's a 27 percent decrease when compared to the number of reported cases in 2016. Police received 36 reports of rapes and 10 attempted rape reports in New Providence. Five rape reports on Grand Bahama and 11 reports of rape on the Family Islands last year. Meanwhile, unlawful sexual intercourse was up by 1%. In New Providence, unlawful sexual intercourse rose by 23% with 107 reported cases in 2017 compared to 87 cases in 2016. For me, I understand the fear of crime. And I believe that we should not want to see no rapes in this Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And that is why every effort, every strength that we have, we're going to attack them and to make sure that there's none wrong. We believe that our ladies and our boys and our girls and our children should be able to move around and freely. There were nearly 200 complaints filed against officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force in 2017. That's according to Deputy Commissioner of Police Emmerich Seymour, who released those statistics 
at police headquarters this morning. And for the year in review, the year in review, the police complaints unit received a total of 197 complaints. These were complaints made by members of the public against police officers. Of those 127 reports, 19 were centered on conduct of a major nature, 173 centered around unethical behavior cases, and five around neglect of duty. This amount, this amount has in fact represent a decrease of 5% over the previous year, 5% decrease in the amount of complaints over the, over the past year. And from the amount reported, from the amount reported, the 197, some 57%, or 112 of these incidents have been investigated and completed, and another 43%, or 85 of these matters, are still open under investigation. Minister of National Security Marvin Dames is slamming opposition leader Philip Davis's assertion that the FNM failed to lessen crime. Dames pointed to the six homicides recorded in the last two months of 2017 as evidence that progress is being made. We had one homicide in November of uh, 2017, unprecedented, and that was a domestic related matter. And I believe that there were about five homicides in, in, in December. Okay? So when you, when you compare by quarters, for example, the numbers were reduced significantly. Okay? And people on the streets were talking about it. Dame says the homicide numbers from the first two months of 2017 reflect poorly on the Christie administration's handling of crime. He also hit back at Davis's claim that the decision to shut down the National Intelligence Agency led to increased crime. The former Deputy Prime Minister wants to play politics. We had 33 homicides for the first two months of 2017, but we don't intend to play politics. We t you talked about the National Intelligence Agency. He has no factual information on that. We did an assessment. We spoke to the heads of law enforcement throughout this country. There was no connection. No one understood what this unit was all about. And there was no laws governing how it ought to have operated. Tourism Minister Dionisio de Aguilar insists that the Bahamas is safer than most major cities because the Bahamas doesn't face a significant terrorism threat. De Aguilar was responding to that U.S. Embassy advisory warning its citizens not to visit over the hill communities or the fish fry after dark. Jared Hicks tells us more. We've got to focus on the good stories and not constantly beat ourselves over the bad stories. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy. In our quest to sensationalize an event, we damage the destination. Tourism Minister Dionisio de Aguilar says after visiting major cities like London and New York, which are both considered targets for terrorism, he feels much safer here at home. Tiagula was responding to questions from the media surrounding a U.S. embassy advisory that warned American citizens not to visit over-the-hill communities and cultural spot the fish fry after dark. Tiagula acknowledged that crime does affect people in the Bahamas and by extension the Caribbean. However, he says the media coverage here in the Bahamas reflects poorly on the country. If you think about Mexico and you think about uh, uh, Jamaica, they have far worse crime problems than we do. But they have mastered the art of reporting it, but not sensationalizing it. And that's maybe what we've got to focus on. Diagula pointed out that other tourist destinations which have higher crime rates than the Bahamas are much more reluctant to publicize crime statistics. When you compare the Caribbean and you compare uh, Nassau or the Bahamas to other major cities of the world, if I was a foreign visitor, I would feel safe. When you go to London, you always got to watch out for some terrorist or someone going to a mock, uh, uh, um, or you go to the United States. I was recently in New York at Grand Central Station, and they had a complement of, of armed forces in there with submachine guns. And everybody's always looking around. You always got to be worried that who's going to come in there and start creating havoc, or which terrorist is going to uh, uh, um, create havoc. We don't have that in the Caribbean. Additionally, the tourism minister says the advisory overlooks the positive experiences that many guests have in the country. With 6.3 million foreign visitors coming to our shores every year, the tourism minister says the Bahamas remains a strong tourism destination. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Hicks. 
Thanks, Jared. Well, Press Secretary Anthony Newbold warning all illegals living in the country to not take the government's warning for granted. This after several in some shantytown communities told our news team that not much has changed since government's December 31st deadline. They, they should just wait for the immigration people to come and see them. Yesterday, as we made our way through several shantytowns, residents told our news they had rushed to meet the December 31st deadline to apply for legal status, but they have yet to hear anything from the Department of Immigration and that it seems nothing had changed. But they weren't complaining, one even calling it an empty threat. The press secretary today disagreed. The minister responsible for immigration is dealing with that, and uh, you know the prime minister said, listen, if you don't come in, if you don't leave or come in and, and present yourself, you're going to be aggressively pursued. That is still happening. So if they, it hasn't changed, they should just stay tuned. Immigration Minister Brent Simonet since the start of the new year has already sought to clarify that this deadline was just government buckling down on existing policies instead of creating new ones. The press secretary today defended the prime minister's use of the term aggressively pursued in this regard. All aggressively pursuing, that needs to be understood by the people who need to do that aggressive pursuing. The people who are not legal need to just be concerned about being legal or leaving. That's what they need to be concerned about. Newbold couldn't say what, if anything, has changed at the Department of Immigration since the December 31st deadline, but he said he's certain the Ministry of Immigration is working on having that ministry work more efficiently when it comes to processing applications. According to the minister responsible for immigration, that has been done, and they are dealing with is it at the level where it ought to be? Probably not. But according to the minister, they are dealing with that. Minister of State for Legal Affairs Ellsworth Johnson says the digital release of the 2018 jury list is no different from the list being printed in some newspapers. Some Bahamians appearing on the list have expressed fear that accused criminals could access their information, including their home address. It's no different than what the information you'd find is on the voters' registry or that, you know, sometimes you would post names in the newspapers. It's just simply that it's now by way of social media. When matters are heard by juries, you know, they're heard publicly. Anybody could sit in the gallery and, uh, and view the persons that are sitting on those matters. One of the things we have to do uh, as we progress to build this country is that we have to, we have to play our role. Johnson says he had to make sacrifices entering frontline politics, and it's all a part of serving your country. He also added that consideration may be given to the elimination of jury trials. I know one of the things that uh, my AG uh, has, 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 and that has been discussed in the past, by Mr. Justice Hall and a number of other, other jurists is whether or not the Bahamas will move, where in certain matters uh, we don't have the need to use juries, as occurred in South Africa. And that may be something that may be considered. I'm not saying that it's being considered. That may be considered, you know. Still to come on our news, the cost of health care could increase in 2018. Plus, the truth of the minister doubling down on his opposition to a 10-year moratorium on the web shop industry. That's coming up when our news returns.